Of all the books I've ever read in my life, there's one I keep coming back to again and again. It's not a rule book, and it's more than a history book. The Bible is a love letter. It's a love letter from the creator of the universe, who spoke and the heavens and the earth came into being. He's still speaking. Every day he says, come, see what I've done, what I can do. Come and know me, and I'll show you what I can do with your life. Guys, you have got to read this book. Hey guys, I am coming to you by cell phone light in my mother's car. It is July 3rd, 2012, and it is um, 10.56 p.m. I locked myself out of my house. My husband's at work. <laughs> so I, uh, I am in my pajamas. <laughs> I had to go to a neighbor's house, bother her and her two kids. I finally met one of my neighbors. It's great, her name's Samantha. She even has a cat a little bit younger than Riley. <laughs> so, I called my mom on her 30th anniversary, when she should be, you know, getting to relax and kick back for the evening. I'm like, Mom, I did it. I locked myself out of my house. <laughs> and you know, my husband works nights, right? So I'm calling her from a neighbor's phone. I go <laughs> and hang out on my front porch for half an hour, waiting for her to come pick me up, because my other option is sleeping in the garage. So it's been a fun evening. I'm out there and it was a really great exercise in faith and prayer because I was out there praying for protection over me, protection over my mother, and if my friends online, the phone keeps shutting off, noticed I wasn't responding to Skype or phone, that uh, God would let them know I'm not dead. I'm actually safe. I'm just dumb. <laughs> so yeah, I went out to the porch to see if I could see the fireworks. And when I left, my wrist just automatically locked the door. And that's why I was locked out of my house today. But this um, is my parents' house. This is actually the room that was mine. I was growing up here. So some of this stuff is mine and some of this stuff is my mom's, but there's like family pictures and her college roommate painted that. This is her scrapbooking room now, so it's all papers and cutting systems and this is like a playground for me, guys. I love it. But uh, these are mine. I have an old Voice of the Martyrs poster and uh, my dolphins with sunglasses. Love it. Love um, it. Yeah. But uh, I am feeling blessed to have my parents available to save my butt. I'm gonna read some of Psalms. I'm not gonna make my goal today, but I am going to read some. And then I'm gonna take a shower and go to bed. So, <laughs> I love you guys. Oh, what a crazy week. Crazy day, crazy week. What is it, Tuesday? Yeah, crazy week already. I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, just wanna bring you something real quick. I read Job today, and I really like Job. Like, I caught a couple of things that I'd never caught before, and one is in um, chapter 31, verses 13 through 15, where Job talks about how, you know, God made both him and his slave girl. So really, you know, they're the same. And then later, after God shows up and says, "Yeah, Job, you're, I, I like you, but you need to you need to watch yourself, because <laughs> yeah, I, I am God and you're not." And, um, yeah, I, I love all that because it's just it's such an amazing picture of how majestic God is, you know. Um, but at the end, after 
everything is restored to him. It goes on to say that Job had another seven sons and three daughters, and he gave his daughters an inheritance along with his sons. And I just think it's really cool that someone in the Old Testament, you know, when it wasn't socially normal to have any respect for women whatsoever, you know, someone who was known for his righteousness did. And uh, that was cool. Something I've been thinking about lately, the whole man-woman thing in the Bible and culture and, you know, where God is on, I don't know, gender roles, I suppose. What are gender roles in the kingdom of God? Are there gender roles? Why are there gender roles and what are they, you know? Something I've been thinking about. But I'm going to head home. It's late. It's got to be past midnight. Yeah, 1227, guys. And I got to work at 830 in the morning, so I've got... Yeah, i got to get home and get to bed. But it's been a really good day. Um, I love my in-laws. Everyone's great. Even... Uh, my sister-in-law's boyfriend, Steven, he's not officially an in-law yet, but he's so part of the family already. It's great. He's my brother. So, I uh, will talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye. Hey, guys. I'm sitting here by my grandparents' garden, their farm, thinking about family, because I have a really great family. We all support each other, we all work together, you know, when someone needs help, everybody's there, you know, and I'm really blessed that way. And I was thinking about how family grows together, just like all these garden plants behind me. Love on each other, no matter what, no matter where we are. As we're growing, we figure things out together. My sister's making faces at me. Because <laughs> she's so loving and supportive. But, you know, the same is true with, you know, our spiritual families. We stick together. <laughs> we, can, we grow together. <laughs> and we goof off together. Other. Family means you love each other, you stick around, and you grow together. And Shadow's here too. <laughs> okay, that's all for now. Bye! <laughs> Just like Ruth and Naomi in the Bible. That's why I was thinking about it. Because the Bible. Bye. Hi. Hey guys, it is technically July 11th, 12.34 in the morning, I just finished 2nd Chronicles, which in my Bible is the last book of the Old Testament. Woohoo! <laughs> oh. I'm tired, but I'm happy, and tomorrow, I get to read Matthew, yes, I'm so happy, oh man, I'm so ready to be reading about Jesus, <sighs> yes, it's, it's dark, I don't know how well this is going to come out, but I am tired, but super stoked, so I had to make a little video, Riley says hi. Don't you? Yeah. So, yeah. It's. This week's going well. Um, we're getting some work done. My kitchen's a disaster. But I cleaned some of the basement tonight. I'm going to bed.
Good night, guys. Hey, guys. It is July 12th, and uh, to tell you the truth, I had really lost track of what day it was for me. But I looked on my calendar this morning, and it's day 33. I'm like, what? I only have a week left. It's like, crazy. Jesus in us, guys. We can do anything. Anything. But, um, I'm reading Mark today. And I was in verse 7, when it really struck me, like, there's things we know, and we kind of, we've known them for so long that we kind of take them for granted. So I'm in Mark 7, where Jesus meets a man that's blind, no, deaf and mute, okay? This guy can't talk and he can't hear. And, um, taking him off alone, away from the crowd, Yeshua put his fingers into the man's ears, spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he gave a deep groan and said to him, Be opened. His ears were opened, his tongue was freed, and he began speaking clearly. And it just really struck me how incredibly hands-on Jesus is, right? I mean, he's always, you know, touching the lepers, which is a big deal, right? Because you know, nobody touches them. And, you know, he's making mud out of spit and putting it on someone's eyes. And I'm just, like, thinking about how incredibly personal Jesus was with everybody he healed. And, you know, kind of thinking about our society and our lives today and how we've become so disconnected. Like, I don't know. You can sit in a room with a dozen people and no one even looks at anybody else because we're all on our cell phones or whatever. And that's kind of sad. You know, nobody just strikes up a conversation anymore. We're all so absorbed with our own thing. We don't, we don't touch. And I wonder how many opportunities we miss because we're not touching people's lives, you know, in just the random day-to-day -day situations we're placed in. Because so we're afraid to get personal. Just a thought. So I'm going to read the rest of Mark. I am loving being in the Gospels, guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, you, you saw me when I finished the Old Testament. And, now, like, oh, I could just spend 40 days in the Gospels. Be like, okay, just just keep giving me Jesus. Give me more Jesus. I want Jesus. I want to read about Jesus. I want to talk to Jesus. I just want, I want Jesus all the time, right? <laughs> Which is good. And um, after I'm done with the Bible, I think I'm going to read some of the books that didn't make it into the Bible. I've been learning about those lately. The stuff that, you know, at some point, some committee of men decided wasn't going to be in there. Well, I don't know. How much do I care what they thought? <laughs> Maybe I want to make up my own mind. And there's, um, there's some amazing stuff in the Gospel of Thomas. It's, uh, it's online somewhere if you look it up, apparently. But I'm going to get back to my reading. But I wanted to uh, catch you guys up. I know I haven't been doing video as much as I was the first, like, half of things and... I don't know why. It's just the way the way it happened. So I love you guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys. It's still day thirty-three. I just finished Mark and I don't know if I can adequately communicate what I'm feeling right now. I love reading the Gospels so much. Everything Jesus said and did and the teaching and the healing and but the problem with reading the Gospels in four days like I'm planning on doing 
That's the crucifixion story every day for four days, too. And I came to realize as I was reading today that you know, we, we talk about the nails a lot. We don't always think too much on the... Uh, The, the mocking and the beating first from the priests <laughs> that sham of a trial at night and again by the soldiers and I guess it's going along the same lines as what I was thinking about this afternoon the personal aspect being so close touching after he touched the blind and made them see touched the lame and they could walk to think that men could touch him that way many of them figured it out later. And as inexplicably terrible as it is, there's this incomprehensible beauty underneath it. Because I know how the story ends. And I know why it happened. <laughs> I know he did it for me. Yeah. <laughs>